Ani, Demi Indigena Kaz, Mokwama Kumanising in Dunji, Mung Dodem, uh, Peterborough and Dunjiba. Um, my name is Demi Mathias. I'm from Tuangwe First Nation or Bear Island. Um, I'm part of the Loon Clan. Um, I'm here at Trent University doing my master's in Canadian and Indigenous Studies. Um, I'm studying the birch bark canoe and uh, its contribution to cultural resurgence, specifically within my community. Um, I also sit on the Trent University Native Association, which um, is why I'm here today to talk about it. The Trent University Native Association, or what we call TUNA, um, is a program that is um, run by Indigenous students for Indigenous and non-Indigenous students, um, just creating like a, a safe cultural space, um, community-based kind of organization and program for students to be involved and get to know other Indigenous students and non-Indigenous students at Trent University. Um, it, it, um, so it, it acts like a home away from home and you get to, you know, you get to make new friends through this organization and um, lifelong friends, right? Because we all come from somewhere and the tuna being kind of that home base or, or that, um, that place to kind of be yourself and express your, your Indigenous culture and we host a lot of events. We also act as um, like a, con a connection, but also communication line between um, different programs at the university, um, kind of um, in collaboration with uh, the First People's House of Learning. But yeah, so we host a lot of events. Um, some of the events we hosted last year um, were, we had a, um, like a panel speaking on um, Two-Spirited, um, we had like a Halloween night. We just have events where students can come out and just uh, kind of relax, enjoy the company of everyone and just, you know, sit down, eat, maybe have <clears throat> some good conversation and dialogue between people. But yeah, so it's really just spa safe spaces for people to come out and just kind of relax and kind of like de-stress from whatever is going on in their lives or whatever is going on in um, in their schoolwork or, or whatever it might be. Um, it's a good way just to make new friends and um, talk about experiences and um, just kind of have that community within Trent University that, um, that you may not find otherwise. Um, so I think it's it really helps create those relationships and, and the community if you're, you know, missing home or missing family or something. I guess the success rate would all depend on the amount of um, students that come out to the events we host as well and the success of um, how well the events go. Um, I know in that two-spirited event we had there in... Um, I believe it was late November. It was a great turnout. A lot of people enjoyed it. We had um, good reviews of like people saying, oh, this was great, like, like good job. And um, so I guess it's just um, how we reach out to people and how um, they like reach back basically. And if they come out to events or like every student group has trouble getting people out, but those that do come out, if they enjoy it and if, um, if they continue coming to events, I feel that that could measure the success of how well we are doing. Um, right now, we're in the process of planning um, a 50, 50th anniversary of Tuna and also our powwow, which will be held in um, March. So f to measure the success of that, I guess it'll be how um, organized and easily the planning goes, but also... Um, how many people show up and how, how much are interested and, and um, yeah, just the amount and population we get out to those, which I'm hoping it will be lots. Um, we're just in the early planning stages still, but, but we're looking to um, advertise and, and get it out there and then hopefully run a successful gala and powwow. There's always challenges, yes. <laughs> um, uh, some challenges, like I said, in past events, it's it's always the matter of trying to advertise enough to get people out. That's one thing that um, that we're really struggling with um, 
just because we advertise it and we get it out there, but we still aren't getting enough people or those that a larger population of what we'd hoped we'd get. Um, so hopefully with like the powwow and gala, because there will be so much going on, like performances with the gala and, and dinner with the gala and then the powwow inviting in the drum groups of neighboring communities, hopefully with that, we'll get more, um, of an, of an attendance and, and that people will just, um, really enjoy that day. Um, but yeah, there's always challenges with reaching out to people just because I just don't know what it is. Why I think that a lot of organizations struggle with that because they just like they advertise and they put it on their social media platforms or they'll send an email out or word of mouth, but it's still a matter of getting people out after doing all of that. So that's one challenge. Um, the planning, cause, because this is my first year sitting on the association, um, I, like I contributed to my community's powwow, but I've never actually planned events or planned a powwow. So it's all new to me. So it's also a learning experience, um, which challenges obviously arise with that, you know, with the people you're working with or the venues you're trying to secure or anything, right? There's always challenges in that. So it's a good learning experience. Um, you learn from the challenges that you're faced with. So I'm hopeful that the events coming up this year will be great and um, and that w and they will be successful and hopefully we sail through the challenges. <laughs> In terms of feedback, um, I guess it would just be more of like people commenting on our social media posts saying like, oh, this event was great or like, oh, we should host this event because it's been done in the past and and it was it was good feedback and a lot of people enjoyed it. So I guess it's we don't really have like a survey or anything or or any kind of concrete um, feedback thing, for lack of a better word. But but in terms of like the social media platform and the commenting on um, on posts and such that really um, create provides feedback for us who are on the association, um, which is which is helpful because then, you know, if if this event wasn't as popular, well, we probably won't host that again. But people were mentioning doing something different, and oh, like maybe there'll be more um, people that want to be involved in this event. So it's just a matter of getting feedback and posts and comments on, on the posts that we have on our social media platforms that I think would be the best way that we have gotten feedback and continue to get feedback. So to me, um, it's, it's really, I think focusing on, um, building those relationships between, the Academy and Indigenous people, um, collaborating between the two, but also um, respecting one another and in a way that I think comes through the relationships that have been built. Um, I did my undergrad at a different university and um, it's, it's amazing to see what different institutions are doing and how inclusive or not inclusive they are of um, Indigenous presence within the academy. Um, I think that um, Indigenous education needs to start at like a community base or within like the institution at a, like a smaller level, I guess. So like with TUNA, you know, you have your associations and then you have the FPHL and then you have the Indigenous Studies program or faculty and like it's kind of like moving out right so it's the in inclusivity but also the relationships between like each level within the institution and then it's also um I think at least bringing in like knowledge holders and bringing in that land-based or indigenous knowledge because that is very important um to building those relationships as well I always talk about relationships because um, I think that that's like at the basis of everything and and building those relationships and moving forward is very important, especially if Indigenous education is going to continue and going to thrive within um, this Western society. Um, I also think that um, with with these relationships, we build on like like a curriculum almost of like 
of including the uh, ways of knowing and being of indigenous people, but also of, you know, land-based initiatives. And like I said, indigenous knowledge. Um, also with my research of the birch bark canoe, I think it would be, this is like, I don't know, this is a plan that <laughs> I'm thinking about, but implementing um, a curriculum or a course that is based on the land, but like done through the canoe. So it's using this like cultural aspect, but also teaching and and kind of going back to what we knew, um, like th and using the land and through the land, right? Because the canoe can teach you so much. It can teach you all about the math and science and, and language. It, it, it has so much knowledge. So I think that building those relationships, having those respectful relationships, and then, um, and then moving forward from that is is um, is really important within an indigenous education, um, and is something that I think would be very important um, to continue building what indigenous education means and is to people and everyone, I guess. This summer, um, when I was building the Birch Bark Canoe, um, we had like a language component where we had community members come in from Wanapate First Nation, which is very close to us. And they were sharing about language and language revitalization through the canoe. So that could be another avenue of indigenous education of, um, you know, building that relationship with the canoe and building a canoe or just sharing language revitalization through the canoe and, and how important that is. Um, to learning our language and learning, um, learning the connections you make through the language. It's because there are a lot, um, there, there has been so much that has gone on in our communities. Um, let bring back the language would, would help revitalize our connection to the land connection to elders. And it just, it just, I think it would help, um, it would help, you know, continue, um, like just like oh there's just so much within it that I, it would help continue that connection and help help youth today learn more about their culture because it's you know there's so much that has been impacted and we are a generation that needs to um continue to learn and and have those traditions and um, those oral traditions shared and that could be done through the language because or else it will be lost right because there are a lot of um, community members and elders at least in my community there are probably only two fluent speakers left and so of my dialect of Ojibwe so it's 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 a matter of you know reaching out building those relationships and and wanting and that want that want to learn and to share so that the next generation after me or the generation after that can can continue the culture and continue the traditions so that's kind of what i think about it but i think it is important that language revitalization and like even cultural resurgence and um and everything it, it is all linked together and it, it, it's all one especially in terms of um indigenous education in the next 10 years, well, um, it is my hope that, um, so within my community, we have a school that goes from um, JK to grade eight. And then once they finish that, they have to leave the community and either go to New Liskert or North Bay to um, do their post-secondary, or no, secondary, sorry. Um, and so... It is my hope that within the ten, or within ten years, or within the future, that that uh, because we have a native studies or language program at our school, um, it is my hope that that continues and then be at the community base, and then you know branches out further to um, high school age or the post second or the secondary, and then post secondary as well. Here at Trent, there are um, you know language is spoken and there are also um there are also programs and um, classes offered like there's Anishinaabe Moan or there's um, Mohawk or you know it's continuing having those um traditions and culture within the um 
institution as well to then further that education and continue building those relationships. I can't stress enough how important relationships are and the importance of building and respecting those relationships once they, once they are built um, because that is so important, respecting the views and the, and the culture and, and those of, of different groups and um, through that the relationships within, um, within the education system. Um, I think that that is really important um, with over, over the next 10 years building and continuing to build those relationships. I also think that like maybe having more on the land initiatives or or like uh, on the land based learning would be beneficial as well. Um, I always go back to the canoe, but I think that um, there's so much within the Birch Bark Canoe, there's so much you can learn and there's so much to tell that I think that implementing more um, learning experiences or lived experiences through cultural traditions, cultural objects, um, like in cultural resurgence within that also would be very helpful and would be amazing to see within the next um, 10 years um, just because um, of how important it is to remember where you come from but also um, continue to pass that on to generations of um, Indigenous people throughout Canada. I would like to see better relationships achieved. Um, um, and just, oh, I don't know, that's such a hard question just because of, because of where we are now um, and in 10 years, so in 10 years I'll be 34, so I don't know like what, what that will be then, but in, in my perspective, having at least like what I would like to see implemented is a curriculum that is like land-based learning or like a land-based education system that completely um, like starts at the community level and like helps um, like those youth and children in communities learn from the land and, and be out on the land rather than, you know, sitting at a desk or sitting, um, listening to someone lecture you. It's you know, it's about um, going out on the land and going out on the traditional hunting territories and then maybe going for um, a canoe, uh, a paddle or, or building a canoe or it's becoming, um, you know, one with your culture, knowing where your roots are from and then building that relationship with that, with the land. And um, I think that would be really cool to see um, that land-based, more land-based education and for me through the canoe and using the canoe as a tool to teach, um, to teach students and to, to teach everyone really to, to teach that, that the canoe has so much to tell and, and you, while you're building it, you're building that relationship with the land and with community members and with the ancestors. So, um, again, yeah, just building that relationship and moving forward from that and seeing seeing the land as more than just a resource or more than just an object, seeing it as a living being and a re building that relationship with the land.